In the beginning, films about Canada were made to be seen outside of Canada. Films were made by the Government Motion Picture Bureau, the railways, and mining companies to promote the sale of wheat, minerals, and lumber. And to create an image of Canada that would attract tourists to a quaint, untamed country. Others were selling ideology through film. Nazi Germany produced internationally acclaimed documentary films. It showed a youthful, industrialized nation on the march. The images were irresistible, and half the world was scared to death. With the Second World War imminent, the royal couple visited Canada in the spring of 1939. Now, they came for more than maple sugar and lumber. The Royal 22nd Regiment awaits inspection by His Majesty the King. Loyal subjects all, their natural tongue is French, but their coats are British scarlet. The Royal Tour begins. Quebec, gathered by the thousand for this welcome, casts off her traditional reserve in a tremendous greeting to her sovereign. Here, this old French province extends her own characteristic welcome to her British rulers. On behalf of the Canadian people... The Royal Visit was the last film produced by the Government Motion Picture Bureau. A royal welcome to your Dominion of Canada. In the same year, the National Film Board was created in this abandoned sawmill in Ottawa. From here, a new image of Canada would emerge. The film board was a deliberate creation to do a deliberate work. It was there to bring Canada alive to itself and to the rest of the world. It was there to declare the excellences of Canada to Canadians and to the rest of the world. It was there to evoke the strengths of Canada, the imagination of Canadians in respect of creating their present and their future. Today, 500 employees in nine production centers across the country produce the largest number of documentary films in the Western world. Forty years. 10,000 titles. 50,000 prints in English and in French and 47 other languages. seen by audiences of over one billion each year. Eighteen hundred international awards. In this vault lies the collective memory of a nation. It all began in 1939. On September 3rd, England and France declared war on Germany. miles across the ocean, Canada, on September 10th, declares war in her own right as an independent nation. It is against these forces which seek the destruction of free nations and the liberties of mankind that the war effort of Canada is directed.
when I came to Ottawa in 1940, um, Ottawa seemed to be a faraway place to me and to most Canadians. But when I got to Ottawa, I discovered that there was really a new sense of Canadianism there. For the first time, politics was national. Up to that time, it always seemed to be local and provincial, and n nobody really knew much about the whole country. At the film board, what really excited me was that there was a natural sense of the whole world as an organism. The film board of those early years was really a group of young Canadians completely without any film training background, who had been tossed into the job of turning out a wartime information program with the leadership of a group of quite experienced British filmmakers who had been brought out here by the film commissioner. There weren't too many questions asked about what we did as long as we got it out. We just worked hard. We were learning on the job. <laughs> Scarcely had the air blitzkrieg started when a message came to British parents from the people of the overseas dominions. Send your children out to us. We'll see to it that they are safe and happy. Well, would you like to go, Pat? Yes, I'd like to go. Well, what about you, Terry? Would you like to go? Yes, Mummy, I could be a cowboy in Canada. It was a great day when the first of the child refugee ships steamed into a Canadian port. The ice cream is bigger, better, and cheaper. Uh, what kind of pie have you? Got apple, rhubarb, cherry, and lemon, and raisin. Oh, I'll have uh, apple. Apple. Uh, have you any cheese? Yes, we got cheese. That'd be all. That'd be all. Thank Emily, followed by Marie. At this rate, the team of Canadian sisters is turning them out quicker than Henry Kaiser. Now, as Quebec and English-speaking Canada divided over the war and over conscription, the very Frenchness of the five little girls became an asset. As they had once been used to sell toothpaste and soap, they were now employed to peddle war bonds. We were aware of the conscription crisis. We were aware of the fact that French Canada was not uh, entirely behind uh, the rest of the country in that sense. 
I was also aware that there were priorities, uh, the business of winning a war, that was Grierson's priority too, and that was the film board's priority. And I think we'd accepted that, those priorities with no great sense of deprivation. Into this earnest and useful atmosphere, with lightness and fantasy, then came McLaren with his happy band of animators. Once more and you're back to the wall, and over the left with the corners all. Right hand to your partner, Grand Chain, go right, go left. Go right to the buggy, left to the wheel, go all the way round on the ball. Or if you heel, put your wooden leg up and your cork one down. Hurry up, girls, you'll never get round. The board told McLaren to do what he wanted, but it was wartime and he wanted to be functional. Give us a level, please. One, two, three, four. This is the CBC. Okay. CBR, Vancouver. CBK, Watrous, Saskatchewan. CKY, Winnipeg. CBA, Maritimes. The largest convoy ever to set out across the Atlantic Ocean from Canada has arrived in Britain. From Montreal and Winnipeg, Kamloops and Toronto, Halifax, from Pacific to Atlantic. I don't know whether we were, can be said to have invented the country or tried to. I think we were trying to discover what it was about Canada which would really attract the loyalty of its citizens, would give it some to find some notion of what Canada was that all Canadians could appreciate and which would excite them. It's all very well to be a citizen of Halifax or Vancouver or Toronto or Quebec. Uh, what is it about this country, this particular size of country, which could be said to belong to me as a filmmaker, to you as the audience? The sleepy Laurentian village, the red earth of Prince Edward Island, where first the Fathers of Confederation met. The glory of the open prairie, symbolic of the new world's freedom, and the great mountains of the West, a vast inheritance of hope and promise. You know what I'd like to see? Yeah. I'd like to see the world turn back, you know, 20 years, 25 years, yeah. and I'd like to be standing in the gates of my barracks, of my regiment. And I'd like to see all of you march in there. And you know what? I'd change your mind in one week. No, you wouldn't. You yes, I would, buddy. No, wouldn't. Oh, boy. But what could you, what could you prove? Huh? What could you prove? Nothing, but I'd tell you what I'd do. When the I world... said march, you would the march.
haven't you bothered to learn more about it when this is a war and, and people are dying? And if you feel it's awful, then why haven't you bothered to learn more about it and, and learn how you could help in it, how you could learn to stop it, how you could help the people that are being so terribly hurt? An individual like you and I can't help Vietnam. There's thousands of the mothers in the United States is trying to get this war stopped, and they can't. So why should we in Canada here try and do anything about it? I know nothing about Vietnam. And you're only a child. In other words, you conform. Well, what's the good of that? The world has had thousands of years of conforming. <coughs> and it's been doing pretty darn it good. It's been having some pretty hellish wars. But we've done pretty good since the last one already. And we're going to have another one already. If, if we have another one, buddy, and you're in the army, I'm going to go over the other side. <laughs> had been our main subject matter at the film board. And that war, which was, I suppose you could say, a brutally unifying phenomenon in the whole life of the nation, had suddenly evaporated. When peace came, there was a big sense of now what? Is peace as exciting as war? I think you'd have to say no, it's not. But we were faced with the job of finding what it was about peace that could be termed exciting. see what the world would lose if Canada suddenly disappeared. What do you want, Gator? Come on, Gene, this, you Come on, guy. Hollywood says goodbye to a $60 million market. The Canadian disaster has knocked the bottom out of the stock market. Has decreed a day of prayer. Our food supply, already alarmingly small, will now be below the subsistence level. In the world's capitals, hurried meetings are considering the new situation. Caught in this air age between the two most powerful nations in the world, Canada's course is clear. She must work for cooperation among all the powers through the United Nations, of which Canada is a charter member. The United Nations ideal of peace replaced the theme of war. For 60 million hungry children, one ray of hope today is the UN's emergency fund for children, which depends on contributions from more fortunate countries, like Canada. Canada was looking outside. Agriculture, education, health, and refugee resettlement became the film board's concern. Maybe you have a housing problem, but the UN's refugee organization is trying to find shelter for hundreds of thousands of people without home or country. Some have already found a haven in Canada, and more are coming to play their part in building her future. Into Halifax come 1,500 of Europe's displaced persons on their way to new homes and jobs in Canada. Arriving straight from their ship, Parties of domestic and garment workers, still in the clothes and carrying the bundles they brought from Europe, hurry into the warmth of the lobby. 
Children who have never known a place so warm and bright. Parents to whom such things are a far off memory. Women who have watched their children burned alive. A child whose mother lies in a mass grave. But now they are beginning a new life, regaining the dignity of free workers in a free country. Already jobs have been found for displaced persons in woods work, domestic work, needle trades, mining, railway maintenance, and construction. The newcomers leave the dispersal center for the jobs which have been waiting them. The snow started in November. It was snowing every day, non-stop snow all the time. May comes, we had snowstorm also. I did not know 10 below, 0, 5 below, 10 above. I don't know how to read the thermometer. Just when I figured it out in European scale, the system, you know, I knew it was very, very cold. Every night, television, hockey, every night, every single day, television. Richard gets it again, trying to shoot and fan, shoot it away. Kennedy and Stewart up over the line. A pass. Armstrong goes to center, carrying on. Gets to the defense. He shoots. A shot right on. Score! Winnipeg's all right. In Winnipeg, you can go in the street. Daytime, nighttime. Nobody is bothering you. My sister wrote me in my village in Poland. The soldiers came in the night and murdered 29 people. My brother, my brother's wife. Why they do that? I don't know. Tonight I got night off. No work. Maybe take a bath. Maybe go to show. in the morning. Yeah. In the early 50s, the new portable cameras changed the style and content of documentary films. With lightweight cameras and ultra-sensitive film, it was suddenly possible to film almost anytime, anywhere. And a beam across the ring. And the Russian bounces like a sack of potatoes. A flying mare. An avalanche. They're mixing it up in there. Pandemonium has broke loose. This is the third and the... Candid films were new and as exciting as the first motion pictures were 50 years before. And the human punching bag, Ivan Kalmykov. He stands there, bang, right to the mat. Garfonsi backs to the top of the third rope. The villains are on the run now. Hold again. Carpentier with the reverse Parisian crab hold. That's it. That's it. The winners are Edward Carpentier and Dominic Genici. While candid films were an instant success with filmmakers and audiences alike, there was still a need for planned films. Films to inform and films to instruct. You know? There's a big difference in hogs. What do you think of these carcasses here? They all came from Canadian farms. They were all delivered to the same packing plant, and now they're all on their way to somebody's plate. But they're not all just the same. That's quite obvious. And that's quite true of Canadian hogs. Some are long, some are short, some are lean, some are fat, some are desirable, and some are undesirable. Then came the portable tape recorder, and with it, freedom to listen in, freedom to film long scenes with sound, three, 10, even 20 rolls of film to capture one revealing moment. My instructions are three to one in color, 
Five to one in black and we tops. Why did you come to the film board? You know we do 20 to one. <laughs> Not with me, you don't. Well, why didn't you say that That's in those meetings? That's your problem. Why didn't you say that in those because meetings? Because it never entered my head you tried to shoot 20 to 1. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm you shoot, Mike, if, to you... tell me, look, now, just a minute, Mike, maybe you're going to spend the rest of your life as a, graying, finished, it's be 25 as a good, to one. graying, fat guy who has never, Nonsense. ever done anything under 25 to 1. But if it is, Mike, you are so far out of it, man, as a look. producer, that you, it's just a f joke. Look, you think it's, it's somehow a, a f you 25 to 1. Mike, for the love of f man, you've got to be kidding me. I'm 25 to 1 to put a film on? Yes. How much yes. talent have you got? Yes. If you can't it's shoot less than that. It's not a question of talent. If you've got a script together, man, and you know what you're going to put together, you need three to one of the outside. Bullshit. Who in the hell Absolute are you kidding? Bullshit. Well, come and meet a few professional directors. They, they'd laugh at you. If I told them 20, wait till they see this film. What a night. <laughs> there are 800 people there, diplomats from all around the world, and here was Fidel, and I said, Fidel, Look, I said, we're here from Canada, seven of us from the, from the National Film Board. We've got the best equipment there is in the world. And I said, an awful lot of money is being spent. And we got, I said, we got 20,000 feet shot already in color. It doesn't always take a lot of film to make a movie, but it takes time, patience, and imagination. The story of this film takes place in a handmade ocean. Cast and characters are the fantasies of the filmmaker. This is an animated film. Here, every frame is counted. Every movement measured. 24 movements made for each second. 14,000 movements in a 10-minute film. It will take a year to complete it. Four days of labor for five seconds screen time. From the beginning, the most popular films have revealed Canada's own farawayness. Weighing 115,000 tons, bow reinforced, the giant American tanker Manhattan is not venturing into an unknown sea. The Canadian hydrographic charts she carries. For the task of the ship is to prove that the Northwest Passage can become a practical reality the whole year round for commercial navigation. The mission of the Canadian icebreaker MacDonald is to escort the Manhattan and let her open the way. In 1903, the Norwegian Raoul Amundsen set forth to conquer the passage. It took him three years. In 1969, the Manhattan will travel from Thule in Greenland to Point Barrow in Alaska in only three weeks. Some observers say a key to the old religion, 
is to be found in the circle. The power of the world works in circles. The sky is round. The stars and the earth are round. The seasons form a great circle. The life of a man is a circle from childhood to childhood. And so it is in everything where power moves. It's mostly the old people that know about these mysteries. If Colin last heard me talking about them, he'd say, what does he know about it? Riding at the door likes to tell big stories about the old days, but everybody knows it didn't happen the way he tells it. And he knows it too. Shoot the buffalo, kill the game, and send their preachers. In the shame that it's 1864 And you think of peace And you think of war Broke with broke While the tears You've been a brave man For many years While the sadness While the sorrow there'll be a better tomorrow things have changed since I was a boy in Conewaga but I still like my kids to spend part of the summer there it keeps them in touch with the old days with what it's like to be an Indian not that we're different from other people. I mean, everybody eats cornflakes, so we got to eat cornflakes. But I still remember going out to the bush with my grandfather, hunting and fishing. He was an iron worker. So was my father. Well, I'm working in New York City, love. Working by the sweat of my brow. I'm working in New York City, love. Laying that iron down, oh yeah. Laying that film board followed Canadians abroad. It discovered Canada's image from the outside. Say, uh, I don't want to uh, roast you out, but do you think we could have the window up a little bit, the uh, left one now? Would you mind? Left, why, don't you feel well? I'm, uh, I'm from Canada up there. We're used to having windows up the same. Oh, Canada? What yeah. kind of a place is Canada? What kind of a, why, where are you from, Canada? Well, uh, I don't think you'd have heard of it. It's from a little village. It's called Up the Grove. 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 Oh, that must be something like we have in the backwoods uh, in the United States called Hushkosh. What do you do at Columbia Records? I'm a uh, pianist. pianist. You're a what? A pianist, musician. Oh, I see. Uh, what do you play? Uh, the, the, with a long hair, or do you play jazz, or bop, beep up, or what? Oh, I'm the, uh, I'm the long hair variety. You have long hair variety. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you must have a beautiful audience. They must be falling asleep with you.
was the first thing that happened to Glenn was he came to us as a small boy with chicken feathers and straw in his hair. He could play the piano like a whirlwind, and he did uh, his first piece that he did, he recorded for us, which no one had ever done, the Goldberg Variations, which was on the bestseller list. And here it was a bestseller list with an unknown as I say, really, is a small town boy who came out of uh, literally. Well, there's something Toronto. slightly exotic about coming there out of is. Canadian snow, okay. as I admit. Something uh, coming uh, out of Canadian woods, you know. I mean, they expect you to have a Mountie uniform or something. But... <laughs> Thanks for helping my career get underway. Yes, thanks to you. In five short years, Paul Anka, a young Canadian, has risen from obscurity in Ottawa to stardom in America's multi-million dollar entertainment industry. Many have wondered about the significance of this present day phenomenon, the astonishing transformation of an entertainer into an idol, worshipped by millions of fans around the world. Put your head on my shoulder, hold me in your you love me too people say love's a game a game you just can't win if there's a way I'll find it someday And then this fool will rush in We have with us today a most distinguished visitor, Lord Thompson of Fleet. Would you like to know something of Canada? I'm sure he'll be quite willing to spare you a yes, few minutes. Yes, indeed. To tell them. Come away then. Please, sir, could you tell me anything about maple sugar? You know, they, they get maple syrup out of a maple tree. Uh, in the spring, the sap runs up a tree, you know, it does in all trees, and they drill a hole in these maple trees, and then they put a little spigot in there, and then they hang a bucket on it. And the sap, uh, sap comes up to the tree and runs out of the bucket and into, uh, uh, out of the spigot and into the bucket. Please, sir, uh, are you very good at sums? Yes. I think that's a tremendously important thing. If you're going into business, you should certainly be able to, to figure. Two superpower nations really in the world today, America and Russia. Does he, does he feel that a meeting of the, those other nations, other than those two super nations, could have any beneficial effect? Roy, you mustn't bring your Canadian inferiority complex to this country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Canada, of course, is vast and complex. Few of, few of us have the chance to see more than a small part of it. But through the eyes of your cameras, we can get to know every nook and cranny. Your imagination and your skill can link our people more closely together and give us an awareness of our country and our own identity and how well you do it. The National Film Board was established to produce motion pictures designed to interpret Canada, not only to Canadians, but to the people of other nations also. Mr. Massey, making his first tour of the vast installations, sees at first hand the methods and meets the creative artists and technicians who are fulfilling that mandate. The Film Board employs close to 500 skilled workers. In the $5 million main building, every facility is available for producing pictures in black and white and in full color. The Governor General proves to be a real movie fan on this tour through Canada's own film capital, home of the celebrated National Film Board release, Canada's Window to the World. In 1958, these snowshoers paraded through Sherbrooke, Quebec. This 20-minute film marked the debut of the film board's French unit, 
and signal the beginning of an era. The exploration, propagation, and celebration of Quebecois culture. stream of parades down Main Street, Canada, a film board trademark appears. Always look for the unusual in a familiar situation. Others look for the unusual in dangerous situations. One filmmaker spent three years befriending the wolves so he could obtain this rare footage. The gestation period is nine weeks. Litters range from three to ten. The pups are born at intervals of about 20 minutes. Wolves have been described as the ideal parents of the animal world. Three weeks later, the chances of survival for this pup are slim. It's a tough world he enters. And if he does manage to grow to maturity, there's that $50 price tag on his coat and $25 or $50 bounty money on his head. people down yard field, do they take dope? Yes. No, it's not for me to say. You Isn't work? Hmm? You work yes, now? Yes, I do. Most of you are guys I'm working are, right now, Most fella. of you guys down at work now? The, the whole ideal of this thing is for a cause, and the cause is the understanding of other people. The communication, which is lacking today, because you've got Vietnam, you've got all these things, and what is it? Most of you are hippies, you hear so called them. Yeah. Uh, and you don't work at all, right? Yes. Money is such a, a, a something that people are, are, are living for. This is their cause. What, the almighty dollar? In the 60s, everything that happened in the streets, at home, at work, was questioned. What did it mean? What were the rewards and risks of working or not working? Who is the oppressor? Shut up, Annie. Who are the oppressed? I have seven kids, 12 to 18 months. I'm in the house all the time, don't get out. I live on welfare. It's kind of hard living, but we do it. I, when I got married, I, got mar I had to get married. And um, 
I thought this was something that's supposed to last for life because I'm Catholic and I was taught that when you get married it was for good. So, but I, I don't know. I was too young, I was 16, my husband was 19. It didn't last very long. He was a run around and I was stupid. I took his foolishness and had a baby every year. And it ended up when I had my last baby, we broke up. The third baby, we broke up, not the last one. And I haven't seen him, I don't even know where he is. Would you like to work? Or would I ever like to work? Why but I can't go because of the kids. Nobody's condemning you for it. Perhaps we'll say, well, then why, uh, uh, why um, do you wish not to work? We're trying to find out what's, the, what can we do for this? What, what is it? Do you want more recreation? Do you want the whole fabric of the North American way of life has been questioned by thousands and thousands, millions of, of kids. I was seeing all these people, in a sense, rejecting the work ethic and inventing a whole other way of seeing the world, which I thought was fascinating. But there was also just the straight adventure of it. That, you know, going to the, the Haight-Ashbury or following the October crisis or running around in Yorkville in the middle of events and riots and thinking and things going on. We're going on a holiday, going somewhere far away. I don't like the cold anyway. The, the, the negative side was it was a sort of vogue and a lot of people just did it to be where the action was and weren't really but the people who were sort of the seminal people in that movement were real thinkers and, and really I think contributed something to the world and of course that that attracts you I mean big historical movements and that's what it was are always attractive I mean you and, and I guess that touches me I mean I like to be where the world is and I'm very interested in how the world works the senior British trade commissioner in Montreal, James Richard Cross, is reported to have been kidnapped a short while ago from his Red Path Crescent home by as many as four armed men believed to be FLQ terrorists. An intensive police search is underway for the kidnapped victim and his abductors. One morning I heard on the radio at breakfast that there were soldiers in the street. That wasn't something that thrilled me too much. I mean, you have a country that is essentially free and peaceful like Canada suddenly have its civil rights taken away and have the army in the streets and have cabinet ministers being kidnapped and then murdered. I thought, my God, this has to be recorded. It's history. The president of the Canadian National Railways announced that there were not enough French Canadians qualified for senior management positions. Gordon's statement enraged the Francophone population, which for centuries had seen the best jobs always go to the English. The demonstrators serve notice on Canada that Quebec will no longer put up with discrimination. In 1963, extremists turned to violence, marking the birth of Le Front de Libération du Québec, the FLQ. The terrorists choose where Wolf had thought himself victorious. The National Revenue Building, the RCMP headquarters, the Canadian National Railways, the Black Watch Armory, the Royal Canadian Air Force, the Queen Victoria Monument, the Grenade Shoe Factory, the Paul Sauvé Arena, Dominion Textiles, Standard Structural Steel, Eaton's, 
Murray Hill, Chambly Transport, the Montreal City Hall, the Bank of Nova Scotia, the Quebec Ministry of Labour, the Canadian Army, the Montreal Stock Exchange, the Queen's Printers, the Chateau Frontenac, the Industrial Acceptance Corporation, Maid Rappos Residence, Loyola College, McGill University, the Bank of Montreal, and many others were bombed. In seven years, six people were killed. But Walter Legia survived a direct blast while trying to defuse a bomb in a mailbox in Westmount. Are you going to stay here if there's the referendum? And the if Quebec uh, separates, then it's still possible for me to um, survive here in terms of uh, making a living. In one way or the other, then yes, I would stay. There's no question. Why would I not stay? Because you're postponing becoming fluent until some time where you won't have the choice. You could put it that way. I'm postponing fluency. Most of them came here by accident, to this French city with the Scottish architecture. They found Montreal a decent place, and their relatives soon followed after. They found an existence right on the street, the one that ran up from the harbor. Many applied for a peddler's license. It required neither language nor skill. Here they took root, and here they flourished. There were synagogues, theaters, newspapers, and a lasting imprint upon the district. It all happened here. It was on a Friday afternoon that I came home to find the crowd gathered in front of our house. That's the grandson. After so many years. And probably next year they discover the cure. Isn't that always the case? What I heard from her doctor. I don't bother about it because no. it's I wouldn't. <laughs> Your grandmother's dead. Where's Ma? In the bedroom with you. You better not go in. I want to see her. Don't come in here. Your grandmother's dead. Daddy told me. Go, wash your face and comb your hair. Yeah. One minute. The papa left some jewelry. The necklace is for Rivka and the ring is for your wife. Who's getting married? Nadia interview, scene two, take one. Action. I can't. I can't. I'm... I can't, Belle. Try. I'm Maddie DeFranco. Go ahead, try it. I'm Maddie DeFranco, and I live at... In the early years, the film board made wartime information films. I... I'm not... Forty years later, a sensitive filmmaker rediscovers the excitement of struggle and victory in a living room in Toronto. My name is Nadia DeFranco. I'm nine years old and I live in Toronto. I have spina bifida. When I was born, I had a little opening in my spine, which didn't send enough strength to my legs. So I wear a brace. I can feel my hip, my knee, and my ankle, but not my foot. Go on. I go to physio twice a week, Mondays and Fridays. Uh, we do sit-ups, we do the stairs, 
I'm just now I'm learning how to do king. And uh, there were a couple more, but I, for I forget. People uh, can make films here, which sounds like a platitude, but it's not always the case, as you know. But nonetheless, films do get made here under conditions that are different from private industry, which is to say you make the film because the subject matter is of interest, because hopefully it has something to do with uh, a social situation, a historical situation in this country, and it has not to do with making a buck. And that, for me, is invaluable, to have a place where films can be made, where new sorts of cinema can be explored, where the, the condition of this country can be dealt with, without always having to think, how am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to make money on this film so I can make another one? That is invaluable. Uh, the film board and the CBC are absolutely essential elements of, of, of life in Canada. a deliberate creation to do a deliberate work. It was there to bring Canada alive to itself and to the rest of the world. It was there to declare the excellences of Canada to Canadians and to the rest of the world. It was there to evoke the strengths of Canada, the imagination of Canadians in respect of creating their present and their future.